Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats as the program is about to begin.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Oakland School for the Arts, Vocal Rush. I used to bite my tongue and hold my breath Scared to rock the boat, I make a mess So I said quietly, agreed politely I guess that I forgot I had a choice Let you push me past the breaking point So I stood for nothing And now you fell for everything You helped me down, but I got up Already brushing off the dust I see it all, I see it now I got the eye of the tiger, the fighter, dancing through the fire, cause I am a champion, and you're gonna hear me roar. Now I'm floating like a butterfly, singing like a bee, I run my stripes, I went from zero, I went from zero to my to own my hero. Me down, but I got up. Ready cause I've had enough. enough I see it all, I see it now Ooh. I've got the eye of the tiger The fighter Dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar Louder, louder than the lion Cause I am a champion You're gonna We now welcome Chancellor Sam Hogga to the stage. So welcome everyone. Please continue to enjoy your meal as we begin the program, but uh, I am Chancellor at UCSF and I want to welcome everyone to the fifth annual evening of honors and awards where we celebrate all of you, the very best of UCSF health. Thank you for being here. So tonight, we will be honoring individuals who have many roles here and who specialize in a wide variety of disciplines. We are so pleased to be back this year at the historic Julia Morgan Ballroom. For those of you who don't know Julia Morgan, she is one of the California's most famous architects uh, whose probably uh, most prestigious project was the Hearst Castle. I hope that the experience you have here tonight is a special one for all of our awardees. For the very first time this year, we will also be live streaming the awards program on the UCSF Special Events website, and you're welcome to send the link on the screen here uh, to your friends and family. I'd also like to introduce now my colleagues, Talmadge King, the Dean of the School of Medicine, and Mark Larratt, President and CEO of UCSF Health. Thank you for being here. So thank you, Sam. We were supposed to do a trio, but they took away the microphone, so <laughs> what the heck. So I want to thank every one of you for joining us on one of the favorite nights of the year. Our roles at UCSF Health are diverse and complex, helping care for patients and their families, many of whom are from vulnerable or underserved populations facing serious illnesses. Tonight, we recognize the compassion, professionalism, collaborative spirit and tireless dedication that so many here bring to that important work. Collectively, 
You make our clinical operation one of the very best in the country, and UCSF Health is one of the best places to work. Your stories are a constant source of inspiration to me and many others, so thank you for all that you do. Now I'll turn it over to Mark Larratt, President and CEO of UCSF Health. Thank you, Talmadge. Thank you, Talmadge. I couldn't agree with your comments more. Uh, tonight, we celebrate all of you in this room, and it all goes back to our pride values. Now, everyone at UCSF hopefully knows what pride stands for. Uh, it's a good time for us to just do a quick review. <laughs> so the P in pride stands for professionalism, and the R for, and the I for, and the D for, and the E for, yes, those are the values that go a long way to explaining why UCSF is one of the premier academic health centers in the country and in the world. And tonight we'll see that the embodiment of those values is in its people, all of you. Because as important as facilities and equipment are, it's really about the people who work 24-7 in this organization, sometimes in anonymity, sometimes not in the front lines, but the people who do the vital work behind the scenes that touches patients every day, not only at UCSF, but across the Bay Area and around the world. So thank you all for filling us with pride. Now, we're going to get the ball rolling tonight, and I would like to invite to the stage Dr. Mike Anderson and Shema Israr to present our very first award. Dr. Anderson. Good evening, UCSF. No, 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 Mark got you fired up. Good evening, UCSF. This is a party and a celebration. I'm Dr. Mike Anderson. I have the honor and privilege of serving as president of UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. And I'm thrilled to be here, surrounded by so many talented individuals who share our commitment at BCH to healthy children, healthy communities, and a healthy world. Tonight's celebration is particularly meaningful because it's the first time that Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland is involved in our evening of honors and awards. <laughs> just to take that one step further, if you're from Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland, if you could stand or just raise your hand for us, please. It's really a pleasure to welcome you here. It's inspiring to see faces from both of our children's campuses here tonight. And as many of you know, over the past five years, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals, Oakland, has become a vital part of our health network in children's health. Our Oakland and San Francisco Children's Hospitals are quite literally stronger together. Through our Cross Bay affiliation, we're able to take even better care of our kids, both locally, through expert, research-driven, compassionate care. No matter where you come from, no matter your immigration status, no matter your ability to pay, we're here to take care of kids each and every day. <laughs> On that note, I can think of no better way to kick off this award ceremony than with our Redefining Possible Award. This award is presented by a patient or a family who is extremely grateful to UCSF Health for the extraordinary care that he or she has received from their care team or from a physician whose skill, care, and expertise helped redefine possible. And tonight, I'm so proud to announce that this year's recipient is one of our amazing Oakland care teams, the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. This marvelous group of doctors and nurses and staff exemplifies the team-based, high-touch, high-tech care that our hospitals provide to every single child that walks through our doors. And with that, I would like to extend a warm UCSF welcome to Shema Isra and a really cute young man that's come along, the amazing mom of a, one of our Benioff Children's Hospital's heroes. Shema. Good evening, everybody. First off, I want to thank UCSF Benioff for giving me this opportunity to be up here and especially to present these, the, the awards to the amazing team that we have. The product is right here in front of you guys about how, what an amazing job they did with him. 
Um, right now, at this point, I would like to invite Dr. Newton, Blanca Valentine, and Joanne Culler to join me on stage, please. So when your child is born with complication, love isn't your first instinct, it's fear. But when you have an amazing team like we did, that fear can be easily turned into love. Just to give a little bit of a background, Rayan was born at 33 weeks after they detected he wasn't moving and had bradycardia at a routine ultrasound. When I first heard his cry, I knew something wasn't right. He was born with something called TEF and needed surgery within 24 hours of being born. That one surgery turned into multiple OR visits and a nine-month NICU stay. So, Dr. Newton, thank you for being there that night and every day and night after that. Thank you for giving Rayan a fighting chance with every surgery, every OR visit. Thank you for being involved when you didn't even have to. And thank you for just being not only a surgeon, but our guiding light. Not a lot of people can say that, what, that they look forward to seeing their surgeon every single day, but we did. <laughs> Even sometimes on the weekends when we didn't have to, we did. <laughs> but, and Blanca, thank you for being you. Thank you for putting up with us and fighting with us, even when you knew what the outcome would be. Thank you for believing that we knew what was best for our child. Joanne, thank you for being the uniting force behind it all. You had the hardest task of them all, and you did it every day with a smile on your face. Last but not least, what can I say about the fabulous nurses? They're all sitting over there, so please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> not only did they take care of my son, but they also took care of me. They were there for me and understood what I needed even when I didn't. So thank you to all of you for never judging me when I let fear overtake love, for closing the curtain and opening your hearts when I needed to cry, for telling me it's okay to leave the bedside, to get something to eat, to go for a walk, and just to even get away for a moment, for understanding when I couldn't leave him and when I needed a moment to myself with him, for when I just needed to, a date night with my husband. <laughs> for celebrating all the small and the big moments with us, for encouraging me to hold him when I was so afraid to even just touch him, for making it all seem normal and allowing us time to embrace our new normal, for taking, me the, time to te for taking the time to teach me on how to care for him, for telling me over and over again that I was a good mother when I felt less than one, for laughing with me and at me for thinking I was going home a lot sooner than we did, <laughs> for showing me how to swaddle, for the beauty of a good blanket roll, for coordinating his bed with his outfits, thank you, Sandy, <laughs> for finding new and creative ways for him to lay so that he was always comfortable, always, for loving him, for being adjusting so that I could FaceTime with him when I wasn't able to come in just so I could see his face, for allowing me to hold him that much longer, for standing by me when I refused to hear no, for preparing us to go back to Chicago and face a whole new level over there, for ma never making me feel like you were just at work, and now, almost three years later, thousands of patients after, still standing by me, still fighting with me. My family and I are forever grateful, and we will carry the lessons we learned here for the rest of our life. Have hope, love big, and be kind. Thank you.
That's really what we're all about, isn't it? Quite a remarkable story. Congratulations again to my dear friend Chris Newton, Blanca Valentine, and the entire BCH Oakland Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Where's my dear friend Jeff Chu? Jeff Chu, are you out there? Jeff Chu's on the way, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Chu. We now turn to the fun part, which is recognizing those folks um, who have served both 40 and 45 years, the service milestone recipients. Today we're honoring, um, we decided these three milestones needed special recognition and are thrilled to have your longevity and dedication to UCSF recognized tonight. With all 40 years milestone recipients, please join Jeff and I up here on the stage. 40 years, please. For those celebrating 40 years tonight, you started working at UCSF Health or UCSF Children's Oakland in, do the math, 1979. I will not say what I was doing in 1979. Do you know that 40 years of service translates to 14,600 days of employment? Only seemed like 13,000. We are truly appreciative of your thousands of days of dedication and service towards our patients and the whole UCSF family. Joining me on our stage, please step forward, are Margaret Ritchie, Elizabeth Mark, and Susan Wong. We'd also like to commend the rest of the 40-year milestone recipients who could not join us here tonight. They include Te Peggy Damali, Alice Ford, Jimmy James Smith, Trudy Lee, Judith Libbo, Nancy Shibata, and James Sullivan. Please join me in congratulating these milestone recipients. Hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Jeff Chu. I am the Vice President of Human Resources for UCSF Health West Bay. I also want to acknowledge my wonderful colleague, Phyllis Weiss, who is the Vice President of HR for Benioff Children's Oakland, who I'm so lucky to sit next to. Um, <laughs> so there's nothing on here. <laughs> Teleprompter failure. So I'm gonna pull this out. <laughs> um, so this year we have reason to celebrate for a, a few special employees who have reached a golden age of service, um, a career of 45 years. Um, we have one honoree with us tonight, and with, um, with that, will uh, Marianne Olson, would you please come to the stage and join me? So we are so thankful for all their hard work. Th those 45 years translate into 16,425 days of employment. 45 years shows true dedication to the mission and values of our hospitals. Um, Marianne Olson stands beside uh, us today and we thank her for her years of service and thousands of days working tirelessly for the Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland. And Marianne told me earlier that she spent uh, the earlier portion of her career as a, a ward clerk, uh, but then became a nurse and was a nurse for 37 years uh, after that. Um, so, <laughs> truly impressed by you, Marianne. So others uh, who have reached 45 years and were unable to join us tonight are Freddie Dixon, Susie, Susan Hall, Julie Lau, uh, Bert Lubin, Carolyn Lund, D uh, Dorothy May Welzak, and Terrence Wong. Um, so on behalf of the leadership at UCSF, thank you for your 45 years of hard work um, and dedication to making UCSF a great place to work and to receive care. Thank you so much.
So thank you once again to all of our 40 and 45 year milestone recipients. I'd now like to invite Jennifer Viner and Eric Van Horn to present the first two exceptional physician awards. Thank you, Chancellor Hoggett. My name is Jennifer Viner and I'm a nurse practitioner here at UCSF. The Exceptional Physician Award recognizes select physicians for exemplary demonstration of the medical center's values in their clinical practice and interaction with patients, faculty, and staff. I would like to present the first Exceptional Physician Award to Dr. Daniel Balkan. Please join me on stage. I had the pleasure of working alongside Dr. Balkan in his last few months of his six-year plastics and reconstructive surgery residency training. It was a team nomination from the Breast Care Center at Mount Zion for Danny to be considered for the Exceptional Physician Award. Every day that he worked with us, he went above and beyond his call to duty. His contributions helped us improve our ability to deliver high patient quality care and also to work together as one team. The core principles of the award represent our institutional commitment to students, staff, colleagues, patients, and their families, encompassing the principles of pride, professionalism, respect, integrity, diversity, and excellence. Danny has every one of these attributes. This is in addition to being an active researcher and basic scientist in the field of functional genomics, an excellent clinician, and a technically gifted surgeon. Here is one brief example of each of these attributes that Danny has. Professionalism. Danny is a liaison between nurses, residents, and faculty. He takes the initiative to strengthen best practices and quality improvement efforts within the department. Respect. Danny addresses every member of the healthcare team by their name and speaks to them respectfully. Every voice matters and there is no hierarchy distinguishable. He is every bit of a mentor to nurses as he is to physicians and medical students. Integrity. His chief resident, Dr. Eric Wang, describes Danny as exceptionally reliable. If I am at an impasse and need someone to talk to, I talk to Danny first. Diversity. Danny has been a longitudinal mentor for a transgender medical student who is now pursuing residency in a surgical specialty. Excellence. Danny advocates for every patient. He educates them on the clinical decision-making questions and answers that he knows they should be considering and be informed about, but may not know to ask. It is obvious to all who know Danny that he will excel in his chosen field of plastics and reconstructive surgery. His research contributions will strengthen the basic science and understanding of the profession. Physician and research colleagues and his mentees will continue to learn from his clinical expertise and his ability to communicate effectively. Danny, thank you for your leadership these last six years at UCSF. The Bunky Clinic is very lucky to have you during your fellowship year. We look forward to hearing where your career takes you next. From the breast care team at UCSF, congratulations. I'm tremendously hum humbled by this award. Just a few weeks ago, I graduated from the UCSF Plastic Surgery Residency Program. Simply put, I already miss it. I feel grateful to have had the opportunity to train in an environment such as UCSF that exemplifies excellence through, um, through a, 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 de a boundless dedication to patients, colleagues, and academic pursuits. While I am so honored to be an award recipient, 
I most sincerely feel that this is an honor that one has earned and deserved by countless UCS health, uh, health individuals on a daily basis. Taking care of patients is a team sport. UCSF Health is a pretty awesome team. I'd like to acknowledge my support system that has enabled me to succeed in residency, which includes my family, and by, by that I mean my closest friends, my close family, and last but certainly not least, my UCSF, fam my UCSF family, so many of whom are here this evening. I cannot thank you enough for this award. It truly means the world to me. Congratulations, Dr. Balkan. My name is Erica Van Horn, and I'm a clinical nurse three on the intensive cardiac care units, uh, six and 10th floor at UCSF Parnassus. I'm pleased to present the next winner of our exceptional physician award, Dr. Melissa Coleman. Please join me. Dr. Melissa Coleman has always embodied the role of an exceptional physician for so many people. She has demonstrated expertise in her field while always maintaining compassion towards staff, family, and most importantly, her patients. I can say wholeheartedly that when I see Melissa walk into our unit, I breathe a sigh of relief. It is a sigh of relief because of everything that she embodies. She exudes calm and strength, even the most difficult of situations. She is able to take a spiraling situation and control it in the most professional and compassionate manner. There are so many things that Melissa is in the intensive cardiac care unit. She is our leader, she's a healer, she's our teacher, team member, and friend. When I put the offer out to my colleagues to write how she touched their lives, I received so many different anecdotes and stories about how she embodied the role of an exceptional physician. Side note, I got about 15 of them, which is extraordinary. She exemplified pride in every way. She is the professional and expert in her field, and she shows respect to everyone with whom she interacts. Integrity is what she has built her practice on by demonstrating compassionate honesty even when it means that it isn't the outcome that was hoped for. She has shown an immense respect for diversity by finding a connection with patients and families, no matter what their differences are. Finally, Melissa demonstrates excellence in everything that she does. She always communicates in a kind and respectful manner, regardless of how long her day may have been or what stressors she has encountered. Melissa has endless empathy that is constantly on display. I wish that everyone would have the opportunity to have someone like Melissa in their lives. She has been and continues to be such an integral part of our family on the intensive cardiac care units. She has touched all of our lives for the better, improving every one of them, and every single patient with whom she is taken care of. I'm so very grateful and honored to, accept, to present her with this exceptional physician award. Congratulations. Thank you, Erica. I wish that the whole unit was here so that I could thank all of you at once. Um, this was a huge surprise to have gotten this award, but it has been a huge honor and privilege for me to be able to work with everyone in the ICU since I got here. Coming from the East Coast, the ICU definitely became my family immediately, largely because I spend, I think, almost all my time with you. <laughs> yes. um, and every day, no matter how long it was, I knew that all of you were there to support me at all times, uh, even if it was just making sure that I had eaten that day. So, um, and I'm truly privileged to be able to have the chance to continue to work with you, and I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much for this award.
Congratulations uh, to Dr. Balkan and talk to Dr. Coleman. Um, those are very inspiring stories. So I drew the short straw and, and have the, um, the pleasure, I think, of, will somebody go to the green room and see if you can find Cliff Skinner? The, oh, no, oh, no, there he is. He has his own green room, you know, his own, his, his all, all the people, you know, sort of around and getting ready for this. But it's, a, it's really a distinct pleasure to invite Cliff Skinner up to the stage for tonight's first raffle. And um, I'm just going to apologize for all of us that we unleashed him on you. But there he is, <laughs> Cliff Skinner. Should, should, should I say thank you? Folks envy me. B being laughed onto the stage by, all my, by my bosses, all right? This is an enviable situation. It's a great career enhancement. All right, folks, uh, as you heard from Dr. King, my name is Cliff Skinner, and I am the vice president of the revenue cycle for UCSF Health. So uh, revenue cycle is sort of a fancy name for billing, all right? And uh, I'm honored to lead the either directly or indirectly lead the folks that, that kind of convert the clinical activities our doctors and nurses do into codes, bills, claims, and eventually cash from the insurance company. So this last year, we brought in about $4.5 billion, about $70 million over expectation. And that, that money, by the way, provides uh, the, the, our pay, provides for our, our, our supplies, our pharmacy, our, our rent, our salaries, and our dinner tonight. Uh, it's a little known fact, but seven years ago, I had a very poor collection year. Instead of, instead of lavish entrees, we had 412 Subway footlongs, all right? <laughs> Cut in half with a Diet Coke for every person, all right? So that's, uh, if, I do, if that's what you eat next year, you know I had a bad year. But I'm, uh, I'm very much honored to be here tonight. Uh, have you seen, and you'll see more of tonight, there's a lot of very serious stuff here. There's some marvelous people being, uh, being honored. We have marvelous patients uh, talking about their experience. But the folks said, there's, it's so, you know, it's kind of somber. I mean, in a way, why do we lighten it up? So they, they decided or said, you know, what we need is an idiot, right? We need an idiot to come up every three times over the course of the evening and, and just be, make it, be an idiot. And they, they, people thought, well, where would we find an idiot? Right here, all right? I'm the proudest idiot you'll ever meet, Dave. Thank you, sir. That means a lot to me. All right. So, but I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fight. I'm being prompted by my bosses. This is great having your bosses stand behind you. It really. I'll tell you all about this. I'll have three times to do this. So I am going to be your raffle meister tonight. Raffle. We have three raffles, three gifts per, per segment. Uh, and if, there, if you are an award winner, you should have a blue ticket. That's your, blue, that's your raffle prize, excuse me, your raffle ticket. If you do not have a blue ticket, that means you're probably an, an award uh, giver or a guest. All right, so is there anybody, any award winner or honoree that does not have a raffle ticket? Over the back. Uh, are you sure you're an award winner? Okay, she's showing me the, the winner on her stick. Man, that's last year's winner sticker. Come on, you can be more original than that. Good God. All right, so uh, hands in the air if you need a raffle ticket, but we're going to go ahead and get started. It's our first gift, Cliff. All right, so our first gift, Mark's Beautiful got it here. Box. Beautiful boxed wine that says UCSF Health. I didn't even know we had a vineyard. Uh. The box was handcrafted in Mark Larratt's garage. All right, and the, the wine is called, I, I want somebody to Google this, not tell me now, but it's called Indian Leap Cabernet Sauvignon 2014. Somebody check out the price and let me know, because we got two more of these puppies coming, all right? Sorry, Derek. So do we have the winning? No, we have an app for that. We'll check it out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. King's gonna pull out his wine, cheapwineapp.com, right? That's my app, not yours, sir. I just called the Dean Cheap. Follow my footsteps, folks. You'll be unemployed in a few days. Okay, th this, this wine is going home with the winner, well, the ticket holder, 454315. 454315, come on up. Bring your wine opener. Come on! Man, they're excited. Come on up. So we'll just come right up to the front of the stage. Thanks, Mark. 
Would you want to hand it to her? Okay. What, what team are you? Um, I'm from UCSF C5 MSP. C5 MSP, outstanding. You need to be 21 to drink in California, by the way. I'm not, oh, sorry about you. You're only what? Oh, you're just kidding. I, I, never, I never kid, so I, I don't know how to react to that. So our second prize is an Amazon gift card, Mark. Thank you. It's a big gift card. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's $50. My God, $50, All right? That gift card's going home with the person with ticket 454345. There's a lot of fours in there. 454345. Come on over. Oh, this is one of our veterans, right? And to, oh, I, I, I'll trust you. Susan Wong. And Susan, tell us again how many years of service you had. 40. Oh, my God. 40. Congratulations. You just won $50. I remember when Mark was blonde. Your seat's over there. <laughs> I got your back, Mark. She just kind of, all right. Jesus, this is, something happens at 40 years. People aren't thinking straight. Congratulations, my friend. All right, so this is a uh, very unique gift. So I'm, I'm, I, all right, so we have a bobblehead. All right, it's going to go home with the winner 454282. Four five four two eight two. Hey, are you a sports fan? Yes, I am. Do you, do you like the, uh, do, have you heard of Buster Posey? Yes. Good, have you seen him play since they moved back down to Santa Clara? Uh, no, I've seen it, no. No, okay, because that was a trick. Because the Giants play in San Francisco. Or can, I, can I see two forms of ID, please? <laughs> All right, you just won a Buster Posey bobblehead. Congratulations, well, thank sir. You. Great. You're a, you're a winner. All right. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite to the stage James Benan, Cynthia Kiarapa, David Morgan, Faraz Khan, Sheila Antrim, and Dr. Neerid Segal to present our Pride Awards. Please. Thank you, Mark. Um, my name is James Benan. I'm the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for Adult Services at UCSF Health. And I'm honored to be here. It's one of my favorite nights of the year. Uh, I am here to uh, introduce the Individual Pride Award, uh, kick off the introduction of the Individual Pride Award recipients. The Pride Award recognizes those employees who consistently demonstrate our core values. Maybe you can say them with me. Pride, respect, integrity, integrity diversity, <laughs> professionalism, sorry, professionalism, <laughs> respect, integrity, diversity, uh, excellence. diversity, and excellence. And once you hear your name called, please make your way to the stage where you'll receive your award. The first awardee, it's my pleasure to introduce in the clinical professional pride award category is Devin Block. Always positive, Devin believes deeply in the value of teamwork and in putting patients first, whether or not it's in the occupational therapist's job description. The nurses on Seven Long have endless stories about Devin cheerfully going beyond the call of duty. He was on, on, uh, nominated by the nurses, not by his own department, so that says something. <laughs> uh, one patient wanted to walk but suffered all day nausea and wasn't ready until 4 p.m. when it's usually his time to, uh, to exit his shift. Devin could have easily said no, that he was done with work for the day, but that's not him. 
Devin is fully committed to doing what's best for the patients. He understands the importance of therapy and mobility for patients post-surgically and does everything in his power to get them moving again. When no one can offer immediate, immediate help, Devin steps up. He helps get patients to x-rays, fetches them water, and assists them in the bathroom. Many OTs call nurses in these situations, but Devin just does the job, knowing it's best for the patient. He does it all with professionalism, excellence, and a smile on his face. Congratulations, Devin. We're lucky to have you. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone who is involved in organizing this beautiful event. Um, when, I, when it comes to my relationship with UCSF, one word comes to mind, and that is opportunity. It was here where I had the opportunity to shadow an occupational therapist for the first time, and I knew after that that it would be a field I would enjoy going into. I also completed my public health internship here, where I had the opportunity to see and learn a little bit of what went on behind the scenes of patient care. As a therapist, we, it's almost like we have two homes or two families at work. One is the rehab department, who consists of our, our fellow therapists who provide us with support, guidance, and mentorship within our profession. And a couple of you are here, Maureen, Annette, and Nora, thank you for everything that you do. And our other home at the hospital is the unit or floor that we are primarily located on. And I am honored, proud, um, and just lucky to be part of the Seven Long team who have received, <laughs> they've received this year's Team Pride Award. Uh, for those of you who are here, congratulations. The rowdy crowd over there. It is everyone here who has supported me and helped me grow uh, both professionally and personally. I can't thank you all enough, and I can't wait to see what other opportunities UCSF has to offer me. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> the next recipient of the Pride Award is Ricky Ng. While Ricky's making his way up here, I will just start by telling you that uh, the nomination reads that Ricky brings to his job a wonderful combination of knowledge and compassion. He has a deep understanding of radiology and the skills to produce the required images. He is kind, gentle, and helpful with patients. His clear communication and attentiveness put people at ease. He always reviews x-ray orders carefully, ensuring they're appropriate based upon the reason indicated. He does not hesitate to ask the ordering MD for clarification, which he does with respect and in a collaborative manner. His vigilance helps catch inadvertent situations in which orders were submitted for the wrong side or body part. Ricky's actions protect patients from unnecessary radiation exposure. Ricky is a team player. He always gives new students and staff a warm welcome, signals his appreciation for his colleagues, and is often willing to work late on short notice to cover sick calls on the graveyard shift. Ricky treats everyone with great respect and friendliness, regardless of race, gender, ability, or orientation. After an interaction with Ricky, people feel as though they've just spent time with a friend. Ricky also speaks some Cantonese and Spanish, which helps him comfort patients and make sure they understand the process. Congratulations, Ricky.
right, I guess I uh, have the longest speech of the night for now. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, first off, I'd like to thank UCSF for organizing and arranging this ceremony. Um, at first, I didn't understand the meaning and significance behind winning the Pride Award. But as I reflect on its, but as I reflect on its meaning, I felt humbled. I have so many people to thank for this award. I wouldn't be standing here today with you all if it weren't for the many supportive people I am honored to work with. Leslie, thank you for this nomination. You are always so kind, open-minded, heartwarming, positive, and level-headed. Uh, Words won't ever be enough to express how much you really keep our department together and the high level of respect I have for you as a person. Um, to our radio radiology director, Alpana, thank you for being a part of this special moment. While your time with us has only just begun, you strive every day to have our department work at its best. Relentlessly enthusiastic in figuring out new and effective ways to improve to it. I remember you saying in a meeting that if we as a team fail, you fail. And if the only way we succeed is when we all succeed. The department and I see you put your mantra into action every day as you are fair and judicious and truly want what's best for all of us to succeed as a whole. To my food supervisors, David and Lisa, I know Lisa isn't here to join us tonight, but I wanna thank you both and the entire management team for giving me the chance to start my x-ray career here in UCSF. Uh, the two of you always have an open door to discuss with you with any concerns that I may have throughout the day. I am grateful to be a part of the awesome team that surrounds us and embracing us, embracing me with open arms from the beginning. All of my x-ray colleagues, both past and present, are people who work hard and are passionate about the work we do. Every day we take care of one another and strive to provide the best patient care to all the patients we help and sometimes see again. Some of my colleagues live far away from UCSF and have to endure long hours of commute time. Some of them have families and relationships to grow and take care of. But regardless of my coworkers' challenge to balance their home and work life, they all show up to work each day focused and ready to pull their own weight and do the job we are asked to do without question. Their dedication, motivation, and enthusiasm embodies the pride values. I was very lucky to have been chosen to be a part of David and Lisa's hardworking group, as these people are the people who have molded me into the person and tech that I am today. While I am thankful to be here representing the team, my coworkers should be here with me receiving this recognition as well. Uh, to my X-ray classmates who are now my closest friends and my colleagues. Um, I thank you all for your support you have given me. Uh, you've allowed me to grow and make mistakes with you, and I won't ever forget that. Lastly, and most importantly, Lynn, uh, for being my life, you're always so patient and understanding. You have put yourself Second, so I can focus on my schooling and career. Your selfless is unwavering. You are the very best. I think of you any time we are apart. So once again, thank you all for everything you do. I learned from all of you and the all experiences we have built together. On behalf of all of you, this award will forever be cherished. Thank you. Not so fast. Congratulations, Ricky. My name is Cynthia Kirapa. I'm Vice President of Administration and Chief of Staff to our fabulous CEO, Mark Laird. It's my honor to present the Non-Clinical Support Services Pride Award to Ilma Garcia. <laughs> Ilma is a ray of sunshine. 
You can see this with her smile as she comes up here. She radiates joy and positivity. Everywhere you look in Ilma's unit, you'll see the upbeat signs she has posted. Ilma takes great pride in even the smallest tasks. She treats patients with courtesy and respect and works to reduce their wait time. She trains new staff members with kindness. In March, she participated in the Interpreter Services Workflow Kaizen process. Despite having a full workload and already covering for another staff member, she was excited and gave her full effort. Ilma is also an ambassador for the Staff Engagement Survey and leads the initiative, Do You Have a Best Friend at Work? <laughs> Yet, she doesn't see any of these things as an obligation. Everything is an opportunity. She once faced a potentially divisive situation with a work co colleague. Over time, with careful listening, thoughtful responses, and patience, Ilma transformed this relationship from outright hostility to a strong working collaboration and even a friendship. Ilma knows what can be achieved by working with people from different backgrounds, languages, and socioeconomic status. She uses her life experiences to make patients feel safe, comforted, and appreciated. Ilma's enthusiasm is so contagious that staff can't help but be drawn in to the spirit she creates. Congratulations, Ilma. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for this. I'm a little nervous. I want to think. Oh my God. But um, I'm very thankful and honored to work at UCSF. And I'm very thankful to receive this award from everybody at Liver Transplant. Lori, I love you. Thank you. Carmen, the liver staff, Carolyn, Jen, at the freeze. I, I am very blessed and grateful to work um, with a great team. Um, Sorry. Um, I'm, this award means a lot to me. As a former immigrant, UCSF has given me the chance to flourish as an employee and giving me and give to do the best to the patients and to my colleagues at Liver Transplant. Thank you, everybody, for all your support. And again, I'm very honored to be here at this Pride Award. Thank you. Good evening, my name is David Morgan and I'm the Vice President for Faculty Practice Operations and Ambulatory Services here at UCSF. <clears throat> As James said, this is the, the best of nights um, because this is, this is where we get to honor the folks that we're very proud of and the reason why we're here, in addition to the patients. Um, I am delighted to present the Professional Staff Pride Award to Rachel Farrell. Rachel is a genetic counselor and provides important and sensitive services to patients. She often must discuss difficult topics about pregnancy, which she does with quiet and graceful demeanor. Rachel treats each family with respect, empowering them to make decisions that are right for them. Many patients express considerable appreciation for Rachel's helpfulness, thoughtfulness, and kindness. Rachel is honest and forthright with patients and is able to convey a challenging diagnosis with compassion and understanding. Rachel's knowledge of clinical genetics is extraordinary. She has worked tirelessly to stay current in her field and is looked upon as a valuable resource by her patients, coworkers, and by referring providers from all over California and across the country. <clears throat> she also has the ability to teach, passing her knowledge on to medical and nursing students and to graduate students in genetics. Rachel learned Spanish while serving in the Peace Corps and can converse, in Spanish, can converse with her Spanish-speaking patients without an interpreter, which goes a long way to setting them at ease and providing them um, information in the language that they understand. Um, she uses this skill many times a week, particularly in our Green Bay 
Greenbrae Satellite Office, where we have many non-English speaking patients. The sensitive and respectful way Rachel treats these patients is critical to that practice's success. I asked uh, one of her coworkers to also add a few comments, and this is what was said. Rachel is compassionate, professional, and extremely knowledgeable in genetic conditions. Even during a busy day where everyone feels overwhelmed, Rachel always keeps her composure and makes sure she is calm, professional, and goes the extra mile. She has also consistently demonstrated unwavering dedication to her patients. She goes above and beyond to do what is needed to facilitate the best care, regardless of the circumstances, and often is the first to help when an issue is needed. Um, sorry. Just, you, uh, <clears throat> you just impressed the heck out of me. Um, her kindness and compassion extend to her interactions with all staff, faculty and patients, and anyone who she comes in contact with. In short, she's a joy to work with, a pleasure to know, and a very proud member of our team here at UCSF. Thank you, Richard. I'd like to thank UCSF first and foremost for throwing such a beautiful event for all of us and just being in the room with so many other amazing people. Um, the idea to become a genetic counselor began to take root when I was a health volunteer in the Peace Corps, as Dave mentioned, almost 15 years ago. I knew that I wanted to dedicate myself to helping people. As a genetic counselor in the prenatal diagnostic center, this is exactly what I do. I help people during their most vulnerable times, at moments during their pregnancy where unimaginable things happen. To most, my job would seem daunting, but I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I'm proud to work at an institution like UCSF, where women still have the right to choose, precisely at a time where these basic rights are being threatened. For this reason, I am honored and beyond grateful to receive this Pride Award. I'd like to thank my manager, Kathy Drexler, who is on vacation in Europe right now, having a wonderful time. Our fearless leader, medical director, Shilpa Chetty, who's here with me today. I'd also like to thank my fellow genetic counselors and supporting admin staff, sonographers at the prenatal diagnostic center who keep our clinic running every single day top to bottom. I'd also like to thank my family, including my husband, Eric, my parents, dad, Isabel, mom, dad, my in-laws, Ann and Keith, and my four sisters, Serena, Danielle, Miranda, and Ilana, for their love and support over these years. I'm truly humbled to win this award, and um, really thank you so much. Congratulations, Rachel. My name is Faraz Khan, and I'm the Chief Accounting Officer for UCSF Health. I'm here to present the Pride Management Award to Keith Farmer. <laughs> Just like UCSF, Keith is quietly amazing. He puts in countless hours at work as his job as the UCSF controller, and he cares so deeply about his colleagues. His teammates often comment that Keith is seen kneeling besides a teammate in a cubicle helping solve a problem. During his time here, um, Keith has tackled some of the toughest financial matters. Um, he arrived in 2000 
when the merger was, with Stanford was being unbound that left us with no financial infrastructure and many, many fiscal challenges. Keith worked diligently and tirelessly to right the ship. Keith's deep understanding of complex financial transactions has been utilized in developing many of the affiliate relationships in joint ventures that we have in place today. He went over and beyond the call of duty to transition Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland to the UCSF financial systems. Keith has also taken leadership roles in complicated issues that were beyond his scope. For example, he made sure that all UCSF devices were in compliance with payment card industry standards. Keith leads with a positive can-do and respectful attitude that inspires the team towards excellence. Congratulations, Keith. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for uh, for the award. It's uh, it's an honor. It it means a lot. Um, I uh, I want to thank everyone who's here this evening uh, for just for being here and supporting all the folks who are uh, award recipients uh, this this evening. It means a lot being up here and in front of all of you and, and having the support and recognition. Um, I, I I also want to uh, thank uh, the, the people in my department. Uh, the people that I work with uh, outside of my department day in, day out, it really is what makes UCSF special. And uh, being able to work with a high caliber group of people, um, working through issues um, is, is what makes UCSF special uh, and just a, a really, really uh, great place to, uh, to work. So thank you for this award um, and um, uh, thank you. Oh. Congratulations, Keith. And, and congratulations to all the awardees tonight. Um, my name is Sheila Antrim. I'm the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for UCSF Health. And it's my honor to present the Nursing Pride Award to Gerard Phillip. Many patients comment on their experience at Mount Zion radiology with a common theme. Gerard Phillip provided the most excellent care. Gerard gives patients a warm blanket to make sure they are in a quiet, appropriate space for the consent process when they are often stressed and anxious. He is empathetic, he communicates well, he takes the time to listen, and he respects people's privacy. He goes above and beyond in his care, and it truly shows, as patient mentions, patients mention him frequently in the Press Ganey surveys at Mount Zion Radiology. An outstanding mentor, Gerard helped train new radiology nurses for the Precision Cancer Medicine Building that just opened at Mission Bay. He is constantly thinking about how we can improve patient care and patient flow at Mount Zion. His approach to safety is second to none, and his integrity is beyond reproach. Congratulations. Good. Thank you. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've worked at uh, Mount Zion. And Daisley, you know, I do what I love. I do, I always treat people the way that I've always wanted my family members to be treated. There's not just stressed out every day. You kind of joke, you've got to laugh with people. The staff that I work with are incredible. They all back you up. Um, we work as a team, so nobody's an individual. Um, managers are there, other nurses are there, so it's not that like you're just by yourself. Patients are stressed out, they are wanting to cry, they need a hug. That's all that you need is a hug, 
You just need to smile. You just need to be who you are. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for so much for the award. That's all I got. Okay? Okay, congratulations, Gerard. Um, please join me in applauding the first winner of our Team Pride Award this evening, the team from Seven Long Musculoskeletal. <laughs> Are you guys coming up here or? or? <laughs> Seven Long sees it all. This unit sees people coming out of surgery who need to control their pain, get stabilized, and begin to heal. The work is fast-paced, hectic, and high stakes. People are admitted and discharged all day. In such a busy environment, the people working on Seven Long rely heavily on each other, on their shared sense of purpose and commitment to the team. What could be Chaotic instead operates as a beautiful ballet. Nurses coordinate medication with pharmacists, PCAs, and therapists that help patients get out of bed. An incredibly diverse group, they communicate well and think of each other as a seven long family. The family is honest with each other and with patients, and even when that's hard, this helps them deliver the best care, even with all the demands they face. The seven long team innovates, looking for new and better ways to serve, and whether solving clinical issues, finds ways to save time, admissions, and discharges. A diverse team um, that works synergistically to deliver excellent care at the top of their license. That's UCSF Pride in Action. And I'm gonna go off script for a minute because it always begins with a great leader, and I just wanna take this moment to acknowledge Deb Bird and her... Um, <laughs> For those of you who don't know Deb Burge as well as I did, Deb is a fantastically incredible photographer. And so when she has the time and she's down in the city, you can watch her take incredible pictures that bring to life uh, what San Francisco is all about. And I think in her management role here, she brings to life what Seven Long is all about. So thank you and congratulations. Um, I'd just like to say thank you for this award on, on behalf of everybody on the, the seventh floor team, um, you know, those that are working tonight, looking after our patients, and also recognize our multidisciplinary team. We couldn't do it without everybody else, our PCAs, our RNs, our HUSCs, PTs and OTs, our case managers, PAs, MPs, and physicians who consistently support each other as we strive to provide the guest, best care possible for our patients. Um, the team demonstrate the pride, pride in so many ways. When the work is difficult and challenging, everyone pulls together to support each other. When a colleague is struggling, they step up and help each other and celebrate achievements together too. New team members and students are embraced by the team and supported to learn and grow. And through all of this, the team keep the core goals in focus of providing the very best care for our patients and each other. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Nared Sagal. I have the privilege of serving as our Chief Quality Officer for UCSF Health. I'm going to start by uh, thanking James Benan for providing me the most key accessory of his to allow me to present this award. <laughs> Thank you, James, for the very smooth handoff on stage. That was really well done. Uh, 
It gives me great pleasure to present the second Team Pride Award to the team from UCSF Hepatitis C Project ECHO, who I'll invite to join me on stage. As they are coming up on stage, I will tell you a bit about their amazing work. At UCSF, the Hepatitis C Project ECHO, which stands for Extension for Community Healthcare Outcomes, was started in November 2015 and serves over 89 communities across California, Oregon, and Hawaii. This is a collaborative model of medical education and care management that enables community clinicians to provide specialty care to people where they live for complex conditions, including hepatitis C, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic pain, and behavioral health disorders. The model is built on diversity and inclusion. The team admits they have learned a lot from their community partners, from learning cultural differences based on location to differences in access to medical care and insurance. This due diligence, combined with their expertise, means that hundreds of people in underserved and rural areas are receiving care who otherwise had to travel hundreds of miles to be treated or might have gone without such treatment. They understand that respect for the community health providers is critical. When the providers ask for more training, Team ECHO devised all-day online workshops. Now some of their trainees are in turn able to train other external communities, spreading their amazing work. One rural provider said, quote, we had quite a few individuals with hep C, and we would have had to refer them out 100, sometimes 200 miles to be seen. Availability was very limited, and patients were having problems with transportation, so they were falling through the cracks. Somebody told me about this program, and it's been phenomenal. The team are on the front lines of an effort to every corner of California to help eliminate hepatitis C by 2030, part of the World Health Organization's ambitious goal. Please join me in congratulating Team ECHO. Thank you. So my name is Jennifer Price. I'm a hepatologist here at UCSF, and it's really my honor to accept this award on behalf of the entire Hepatitis C Project ECHO. So th this project was born really out of the, the desire and the, the need to improve access to life-saving hepatitis C treatment among people living with hepatitis C throughout California. And it's really been a labor of love. Most of the people on this stage have been part of the project since its inception about four years ago. And the majority of them do so completely volunteer. So they are donating their time and their energy and their expertise to increasing hepatitis C treatment capacity throughout California. And there are some key members of the team that aren't here today. Dr. Nora Tarot was, its, was the founding director of the project. Uh, Carrie Gallo was our project manager until she retired earlier this summer. And Jennifer Sleppin is a nurse who's literally been driving around Northern California, knocking on doors, recruiting uh, spokes to join the program. So we really couldn't be here without them as well. And we just also wanted to thank the liver transplant department for supporting us, as well as my colleagues in hepatology for donating their time training our hep C spokes to treat not just hep C, but all sorts of liver disease. And finally, I just want to thank the Medical Center for recognizing the efforts of this fantastic team. Thank you. So congratulations to all of our Pride winners. I'd now like to invite Dr. Catherine Strolkoff and Dr. Josh Adler to the stage to present the next two exceptional physician awards. Catherine, Josh, please come forward. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a nice evening. I'm Catherine Strelkoff, and I am the Chief of Service in the Department of Family and, and Community Medicine for UCSF Health. And um, I am honored tonight to present the next Exceptional Physician Award to Dr. Laura Hill Sakurai. <laughs> 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 
Laura is uh, the amazing medical director and also the director of the undergraduate medical education programs at UCSF Family Medicine Center at Lakeshore, which is probably most of you don't, but it's out there. <laughs> we have a lot of patients out at Lakeshore, and Laura um, excels in all aspects of her job and does so with consistency and with grace. Um, she is an amazing clinician, excels in all of her quality metrics and all of her patient satisfaction scores, but more importantly has that human touch that brings meaning and brings connection in our work. And I, we, as everyone at UCSF are kind of small quarters, you know, and you hear her going in and warmly greeting her patients. And then, like, a lot of times, a few minutes later, you just hear laughter coming from the exam room. And she brings that same joy to leadership and has just been instrumental in facilitating um, the improvement in both faculty and staff engagement and in the mutual respect between staff and physicians. Um, she has paired physicians with their medical assistants and has a formatted check-in every month that provides reciprocal feedback. And she also has now 360 evaluations of physicians, which allows us to hear from people in the clinic that we might not otherwise hear feedback from. And it also communicates to staff her commitment to the uh, principle that everyone deserves respect in the clinic and everyone is heard. And when she does encounter problems, she's fearless. She will address them. She crosses silos, she doesn't blame, she looks for the solutions. And um, in doing that, um, it has produced a remarkable improvement, both in staff and faculty net promoter scores at Lakeshore. And the other thing about Laura is she's been amazing at recruiting a diverse group of physicians. There is a nationwide family physician shortage, and she has managed to get people who want to work at UCSF and in a really high-performing primary care practice with a great collegial group. So um, she is approachable, friendly, attuned to both to individual needs and also group needs, and balances that amazingly. She's been a, a really highly valued mentor to junior faculty in our department. Um, and has provided them with sort of guidance through those difficult early years of academic life. Laura is truly an exceptional physician, mentor, educator, and amazing leader who exemplifies UCSF core values. So congratulations, Laura. Um. Wow, I'm truly humbled by Catherine's words, and they mean so much to me. Um, the only thing I have to add is that I am so lucky for all of the support I have. Um, my husband and my dad are here in the room, and I've always been lucky to have an extremely supportive family. Um, practicing primary care at UCSF is a joy. We have so much support and respect from the specialists. Um, just a few minutes ago when we were honoring um, Rachel from genetics, I was thinking, wow, that group has helped me out several times. And then finally, I was lucky to take over leadership at Lakeshore at a time when there's been a lot of support for us to do change, to try novel things, to institute some changes in how we structure um, to try out some of the lean ideas. And that's really been fun, and I think we've been able to really do a better job for our patients because of it. So thank you all, and it's really an honor to be here.
Congratulations, Laura. And thank you, Catherine. Uh, I'm uh, Josh Adler, Executive Vice President for UCSF Health, and I'm pleased to present the next uh, Exceptional Physician Award to Dr. Jean Jr. Now, unfortunately... We're going to have to cheer especially loud for Jean because she's pretty far away. So unfortunately, she can't be here tonight. Uh, but I'd like to tell you uh, about this extraordinary physician and extraordinary person. Jean Jr. Uh, recently graduated from the P uh, Pediatric PLUS residency program. PLUS stands for Pediatric Leadership for the Underserved. She came to UCSF with a deep commitment in to reduce poverty, hunger, illness, and human suffering and deeply and, and quickly made her mark. She proved to be an excellent doctor, picking up on subtleties in treating autistic children and other people with disabilities, communicating effectively with colleagues and patients, and producing plans to manage their care. Beyond that, she put in countless hours in helping to produce Pathways to Pol a Pathways to Policy playbook, which is a resource guide for young people who want to uh, create a safer, healthier, and stronger community. One of Jean's colleagues states, Jean truly walks the walk of her values, advocacy efforts and follow through with both patients and the community at large. The reason Jean is not here tonight is she is currently working with the Indian Health Service on the Pine Ridge Res Reservation in Idaho, where medical needs are tremendous and she is already making a major contribution. So we are very proud of Jean and uh, wish her great success in her career. So thank you, Dr. Adler. I'd like to please welcome Mitch Erickson to the podium to present the Exceptional Advanced Health Practitioner Awards. Good evening, thank you, Dr. King. <clears throat> so um, my name is Mitch Erickson, and I am the Director of Advanced Practice for UCSF Health, which encompasses approximately 560 providers across um, hospitals and clinics and affiliates, and in 169 unique specialties. And the gentleman I'm about to introduce, but before I do that, I just wanted, I don't want to upstage the Cliff Skinner comedy hour, but I wanted to point out <clears throat> that I am currently trying to reduce the employee carbon footprint of UCSF by wearing dress slacks that are made 100% from recycled plastic bags. <clears throat> So the, the gentleman I'm about to introduce <laughs> um, have made multiple contributions to our organization, but I wanted to point out that they were part of 40 individuals that were nominated, which almost doubled from last year's nominations. And I want to acknowledge the selection team who made the, cho the difficult choice of choosing only two out of 40 individuals and acknowledge their contributions across the enterprise. So the first recipient I'd like to introduce is Brandon Sessler. If you could come to the stage, please. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw on the content of his nominees that um, exemplify the pride values. Um, P, professional, he is competent, reliable, and accountable. R, for respect, he exercises the utmost consideration for others. I, for integrity, he is honest, trustworthy, and ethical. D, for diversity, he celebrates the differences of others. E, excellence, he is dedicated, motivated, and innovative. I've known Brandon Sessler as a senior physician assistant in the UCSF Health Spine Center for five years. I know him to be a strong professional voice for his peers and for his patients. He, has chosen, he was chosen to be a poster provider for an advertising campaign by the UCSF Marketing Department highlighting advanced practice providers at UCSF Health. <laughs> He's passionate about almost everything he engages in, including patient education, helping patients understand their symptoms, 
and disease and overcoming the challenges of their conditions. Listening to patients, he believes, has the greatest impact on our sustained patient engagement in their recovery. I work closely with Brandon on the UCSF Advanced Practice Provider Advisory Board and its committees, to which he is a consummate contributor. Congratulations, Brandon. Uh, just a couple of words. Um, thank you so much. It's an honor to be recognized when there are so many incredibly talented people here at UCSF. Um, I've been here for five years, and I put a lot of time and dedication and heart into caring for patients, caring for my coworkers, and really trying to exemplify the pride values of UCSF. Um, it was about a year ago that we lost one of our really talented young spine center nurse practitioners. Um, she left to pursue a personal relationship, and we were sad for our loss, but very happy for the direction her life was headed. Um, she was very sad and emotional on one of her last days, and to cheer her up, I joked, uh, don't be sad, I'll grab my things, I'm coming with you. Uh, to which she jokingly responded, no, you can never leave, the spine center would fall apart without you. I was flattered, I reveled in it for a second, <laughs> and then I quipped immediately back, no way, all of you would be fighting for who gets to work with, with Dr. Vidat Devrin. I'm here today because I have a boss that gives me a voice, who gives me the extra time to connect with patients, to really care for patients. He's an incredibly talented surgeon, but he values what I do in the clinic, what our nurses do on the floor, what our schedulers and what our staff do, equally as valuable as what he provides in the operating room. I'm also here because I have an incredible manager, Jennifer Watts, who empowers us all to share what we have to give. Um, we have leadership that stood up for us when orthopedics told us we needed to see 20 patients per clinic day because our, our colleagues in hand and foot and ankle and some other areas were seeing that many. And our, our chief of spine said, well, spine is a little different. We, we sometimes see things that are a little bit more complex and we'll, we'll give you more time. We value the care that you provide our patients. We value the ability of our PAs and NPs to see really complex patients. And we value the connection. And if you take five more minutes, it's valuable. And so we are so grateful to have a strong manager, to have surgeons and physicians that really back us up and support that what we do is valuable. And then I'd also like to put a shout out to our young new staff members. We have talented practice coordinators. We have talented medical assistants. Um, the harder they work, the more it empowers us through our challenging clinic days. When we're behind and we see them hustling in the hallway, it gives you that extra boost of energy to put that smile on, to put the patient first, to really be the very best that you can be. And so I'm so appreciative that I get to work with patients every day, but I work, work in an environment where everyone treats each other like family, that we care about each other, that we fight with each other, but ultimately we strive for everyone to do better and to give more. Thank you so much. So the next um, provider I'd like to invite up to the stage is Gotham Iyer. <laughs> and with Gotham, you get to meet his family. <clears throat> so I will again draw on the contributions of his nominators in terms of the pride um, values. So P, professional. He leads by example. Our respect, he is prompt, courteous in his interactions with people regardless of his service load. 
integrity. He is perpetually looking for ways to improve the surface and patient management. Diversity, he is recognized for his compassion and reassurance with patients. E, his name has become synonymous with excellence and elevates all parts of the service. Gotham is a lead nurse practitioner in the, and primarily manages inpatients in the advanced lung disease service. I have known him for several years. He is a phenomenal clinician um, with an acumen and a desire to expand his scope of practice to better serve our patients and support the needs of his team. He has a clinical expertise in surgical critical care, ECMO, and their procedural services. This stems from a deep passion for advancing the role of NPs and all advanced practice providers. Gotham has dedicated his expertise in several domains as a member to the novice MP providers, educator as a faculty member in UCSF School of Nursing, and being very supportive of UCSF's ANCC accredited nurse practitioner fellowship, which we received last year. Um, his graduate studies led him to an emphasis on integrative and complementary healing, which he endeavors to apply to all the clinical care he provides. Congratulations, Gotham. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for letting me have my daughter up here. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> I think she, she likes to be in the spotlight, so... Uh, Maybe one day she'll be the next NP up here in, in, in a few years. But, but I had no idea of the magnitude of such an award until coming here tonight. And it was, it was humbling and it was wonderful to receive such an award when I got the call. But I had no idea that, that I would be in such rarefied air. And so even, even Mark Laird, when I met him tonight earlier, he even said that, you know what, you're going to see all the people that receive this award and it's exceptional, and it's amazing, and you're going to see the company that you're with. So I, I couldn't agree with him more. So thank you for, for letting me come up here and, and share a few words uh, about, about what I do and, and the practice that I have. So um, I, I came to UCSF almost eight years ago, and one of the big driving reasons for coming to UCSF was I knew that there was a culture of uh, advancement and promotion of nurse practitioners. And and within the service that I do, within the Advanced Lung Disease Service, I never could have imagined that I had such a tremendous opportunity for, it's just, it's been pure creation and growth uh, from the time that I started almost eight years ago. And, um, and you know, we take care of a, a, a very sick patient population in the intensive care unit, and it's a de very demanding job. And I could not have done it without the support of incredible pulmonologists, surgeons, pharmacists, my NP colleagues, our nurse coordinators in the outpatient world. It takes an incredible team effort to do all that, and there's no way that I could do uh, what I do with it without those folks. And uh, I want a special shout out to my bosses and collaborating physicians, Dr. Steve Hayes, who I know is here tonight, <laughs> and Dr. Jasleen Kukreja, who, uh, who is our surgical director and program director, and she can't be here tonight, but, uh, but a special thanks to her as well. But it's because of those two and their leadership and their vision and their drive that they have allowed me to cultivate my own practice and our practice within the inpatient setting to, to what it has been. And so, um, and of course, thank you to my wife, lovely wife, Laura, who's here tonight with our kids. And she, <laughs> thank you. And she has received countless texts over the years saying that I'm going to be late for dinner or I'm not going to be home for dinner because a patient needs me. And never a single time has she flinched that a patient or a family needs me, and she understands fully the breadth of, of what we do. So thank you for this award, and I know that it's going to be a defining moment in my career. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to UCSF, and it's a, it's a really great privilege. Thank you. Everyone who'd like to touch Mitch's pants a little later, he'll be out in the uh, entry. Uh, congratulations to our exceptional advanced health practitioners. It's, it's spectacular. 
And now for an additional set of exceptional physician awards uh, presented by Dr. Brad Monash and Dr. Steve Wilson. Please join me. Apparently I'm first. Um, so I am uh, congratulating Dr. Roberta Keller, who unfortunately could not be here, although fortunately for her she's on vacation and out of the country. Um, so a few words about Dr. Keller. So she came to UCSF in 1992 as a first-year resident, I remember, because I came in 1991 as a first-year resident in pediatrics, um, and stayed, and she completed her fellowship in neonatology and stayed on as a faculty member in neonatology. Um, and I just wanted to say a few words about what, what uh, characterizes Dr. Keller. So a lot of things do. Um, she's an exceptional teacher and very dedicated to that. She's an exceptional learner um, and always uh, works to advance and stay at the forefront of her field. She's an exceptional team member. But one thing I think above all else characterizes her, and that's dedication to her patients. It is remarkable how much uh, time, energy, and commitment she puts into the care of her patients every day on the unit. And uh, in recent years, she's worked with Dr. Jeff Feynman to develop the pulmonary hypertension service, which in the neonatal unit is the sickest of the sick, the most complex patients um, cared for in the neonatal unit. And the amount of time and energy that she devotes to this and to providing exceptional care, advocating for patients, working with nurses to help bring them up to the highest um, level of care for these very complex patients, working with other physicians to do the same thing, um, incorporating learners when incorporating learners into the care of really sick patients can be very challenging. It's remarkable. She seems like the energy energizer bunny all the time. And uh, I just wanted to congratulate her on this award in her, uh, in her absence and really just thank her for all her service. I don't typically make it out my first night on service, but I couldn't miss the opportunity uh, to present this award to Andy Lai. Andy Lai, if you come up here. I was asked to keep it to two minutes. My first speech, I think, was five pages and about 15 minutes. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to stick to the script. And I timed myself multiple times, and this was two minutes. So let's, let's see how I do here. In the morning, I open my inbox to find a beautiful tribute to a patient who has passed away in the hospital, sharing the ways she has impacted the world and has left an indelible impression on her care team. In the afternoon... I remember to thank my patients' bedside nurses for the extraordinary care they provide. In the evening, I receive an automatic notification that the wiki page I'm responsible for updating as director of the medicine service has been updated yet again by an altruistic colleague. And as I lie down at night, preparing for slumbers befalling, I reflect on the day's work and the various ways that Andy Lai has made me a better physician UCSF a better hospital, and the world a better place. Andy Lai's magic shines through the innumerable ways he makes a difference in the lives of those around him each and every day. It is in the deep respect he embodies for the interprofessional care team and in the frequent recognition he provides. It is in the hot breakfast he brings for trainees. It shines through Andy's working unscheduled evening hours to ensure patients receive important procedures and his quietly working holiday blocks for colleagues who cover non-holidays in return. It is in our patient safety culture where physicians comfortably and confidently discuss medical error and receive unwavering support in return. It is in the attending to attending communication that occurs following each and every procedure completed by the procedure service. It is in Andy's compassionate bedside interactions, in his patients' unbelievable whiteboards replete with drawings and diagrams, and in Andy's proactive follow-up phone calls to patients he has discharged. Andy persistently leaves a trail of gratitude from his patients and their family members. 
Andy once cared for a family member of a retired uh, UCSF nurse who shared the following. How blessed were we? These physicians provided the most comprehensive, caring, and compassionate, rational care that we could ever imagine. She confessed that her experience with Andy Lai forever changed her opinion about the field of hospital medicine. Another patient proclaimed, never in my 20 years as a patient in this hospital has a, do a doctor devoted so much time and compassion into ensuring my family and I understood the plan for our stay. He has a good soul. Andy, your grace, humility, and generosity inspire us all, and your heart and spirit leave an indelible impact on each and every one around you. Thank you so much. Hard to follow that up, so thank you so much, Brad. I really love you, and I really appreciate uh, those kind words. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to uh, all the award recipients, and thank you for this lovely event. Uh, this is just beautiful, and I'm grateful for this lovely award. Um, I must admit, I remember the day I got a cryptic call from uh, Dr. Josh Adler's assistant saying he wanted to speak to me in like 30 minutes, and I felt like I was getting called to the principal's office, uh, but he had this lovely news, and uh, I'm really grateful. Uh, UCSF is a special place to work, and within that, our division of hospital medicine is even more special with the culture of building up those around us. Um, this is really an award to all those I work with, and it's a, it's a village. It, it's a team effort every single day. A uh, special shout, shout out to all the inspiring and awesome nurses, and they've been uh, saving my butt since I was a baby intern here at UCSF, and they still do that to this day. Um, they are the quintessential patient advocates and have earned my utmost respect. Uh, I'd like to thank our current uh, medicine department chair, Dr. Bob Wachter, for creating a wonderful place to work. Our legendary, the Brads, Dr. Brad Sharp and Dr. Brad Monash, uh, for their uh, incredible leadership and support they're just known throughout our hospital. And uh, to each and all of my colleagues and trainees who inspire me each day, our patients. And last but not least, my parents, uh, my dad, Banya, and my mother, uh, Alice, who are here today, have uh, provided a bedrock of support throughout my career. So thank you very much. And so now I would like to invite Vocal Rush back to the stage for another song while you all finish off your dessert. So a big hand for Vocal Rush. Too high. No, you can't get too low. You can't get too low. Cause it's 
Cause if you get too high, you can't get too high. Then you surely be low. No, you surely be low. One, two, three, four. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage Cliff Skinner for raffle number two. Boy. That is one tough act to follow. My God. Can we give it a, another hand to Vocal Rush, please? My gosh. Holy cow. They have so much talent in them. So much talent at that age. My gosh. I'm, I'm still striving for a, one iota of talent. But I'm not as talented as Mitch Erickson because he wears pants made out of trash. Is that, I, did I catch that right, Mitch? Woven trash? Good. Yeah, another, another reason for me to look up to you, Mitch. Big, all right. All right, but, uh, but I'm thrilled to be back. And uh, I want to say something actually quite serious. I think Dr. Monash has to use the word gratitude because that's something I've been hearing all evening long. When we hear these people winning these awards, they, what are the first thing they do? They thank their colleagues, they thank their coworkers, they thank everybody for themselves. And that's just so, uh, so motivating to hear people that have that much humility and that much gratitude for the organization. So what it does is takes a, a marginal performer like me and makes me aspire for solid, Average performance, all right? I've turned over a new leaf tonight thanks to these wonderful leaders in this room. All right, uh, did anybody figure out, right, we're, we're, we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, wine first, I believe. So we, I'm gonna call the winner. So Dr. Hoggood has picked the winner of the wine. And no sir, you don't, you, you can't win, you know that. We, we talked about this. Uh, so it's uh, 454280. <laughs> Dr. Lai? What a winner. So did, now, remember the homework assignment? The homework assignment for the last time was to find out how much that bottle was worth. So who much did it? Who did it? A thousand bucks. Uh, thousand bucks. I think it's not a thousand bucks. So it's, uh, no, did anybody actually look it up? I'm sorry, Dr. Lai, I know you want to crack open this, but you probably wait till you get back with the car at least, right? So it's Indian Leap Cabernet Sauvignon 2014. 42 on Google? Well, I'll be damned. Well, how about that? So that's going to be back on eBay tonight for $41.50, right? Because it'll sell, price to sell quickly. Thank you, Dr. King. All right. All right, our, our next gift uh, get, is the, uh, the $50. Is that the Amazon gift card, sir? All right. Thank you. All right. All right, so Dr. Haga has picked the winner of the Amazon gift card. It's 454349. What does that groan mean? They have three, four, eight. They have three, four, eight? So, okay, four, five, four, four. <laughs> It'd be help if I read it correctly. Four, five, four, three, four, nine. Oh my God. I heard that. I want to hear winner. Oh, good. Oh, it's, it's another one of our winners from the, of our Grateful Physician Award. So that's great. And your name again, I'm sorry. Laura. Laura. And Laura, you're at uh, Lakeshore, right? That's correct. So are you an Amazon Prime user by chance? Oh, definitely. Right. I will cherish this gift. One, one more question. Do you know if, if you can access Amazon Prime from your work computer? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, we knew the answer already. That's why I asked you. HR is here for a reason, uh, but <laughs> congratulations anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> she is wonderful, just like, just like Dr. Strolkoff said. I mean, it's just it's, it's truth in advertising. All right, now we have our last pr prize for this raffle, then I'll come back in a 45 minutes or so. And this is a, a bobblehead doll, not from a San Francisco Niner like Buster Posey was, remember? It's, okay, it's going to go home with 454340. Groans again. Oh, great. Steph Curry. Steph Curry. Okay. Steph, no, I don't need to see it. I trust you. Okay. Are you a sports fan? Are you, I have to say to the mic, are you a sports fan? I'm a Raptors fan. Toronto Raptors fan? All right. Get up. You. you know, I, the, valet, the valet guys gave me their car keys, you realize that? 
Raptors. So, but you know, the Raptors beat the Warriors. You realize that? They beat the Warrior. They beat the Warrior. The rest of the team was hurt. Oh, that's true. <laughs> So this is a, well, you probably just want to sell this right away. It's a Steph Curry bobblehead. But anyway, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Bud. All right, we're good. We're good? We are. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Everything was going all right till we gave our Raptors <laughs> fan of Steph Curry bobblehead. What kind of crap? I can't believe it. Uh, so thank you, Cliff. Thank you very much. So I'd like to invite Dr. Adrian Green and Dr. Steve Wilson uh, back to the stage to present the Patient Safety Awards. Good evening. I'm Adrian Green. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Adults and Vice President for Patient Safety. And as everyone knows, patient safety is vitally important to our organization, and I'm very grateful to all of the work that goes on in patient safety at UCSF, and I'm delighted to be able to recognize these two amazing teams tonight. I'm delighted in particular to present for the first time a patient safety award to a team at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, Oakland. This award goes to the BCH Oakland Neonatal Intensive care unit team who I had the pleasure of getting to eat with tonight for their work in reducing unplanned extubations. So if you could join us up here. While they're, while they're coming up, I'll, I'll share their work. Unintentional dislodgement of an endotracheal tube is the fourth most common adverse event in neonatal ICUs and can lead to serious complications. The benchmark for unplanned extubations is less than one in 100 ventilator days. In 2002, BCHO identified their high rate of 2.42. They set an ambitious goal to decrease their rate of unplanned extubations by 40%. The team's improvement work included the It Takes Two campaign to adopt the use of two sets of hands during ET tube handling, standardizing procedures to stabilize the tube and head during procedures, and improving communication about tube stability and readiness for extubation. This was reinforced through education, rounding, visual management, and performance monitoring. This team was able to reduce their rate to 0 0.56 per 100 ventilator days in astounding 77% decrease in unplanned excavation. Amazing. Please join me in congratulating this team for all of their amazing work. Thank you very much. We very humbly accept this award on behalf of the whole team. What you see on the stage, of course, is a fraction of the team that it takes to improve patient safety in our practices. We represent all of the disciplines involved, medicine, nursing, respiratory care, and every other discipline. Thank you very much. Hello again, uh, Steve Wilson, the Chief Medical Officer for the Benioff Children's Hospital in San Francisco. And I'm here to uh, present the other Patient Safety Award to the Benioff Children's San Francisco Clabsy Prevention Team. Come on up. Come on and join me. So I have the pleasure of working very closely with this team of very dedicated people. And as was said earlier, um, this team is a part of the team that has found amazing success. So as everyone in this room I'm sure knows, central line infections are one of our 
preventable harms with our institutional goal of achieving zero harm. It's very important that we focus on these improvements. Um, as every one of these infections it affects a real patient, you typically a very sick patient, one that's very vulnerable. Um, and this team has worked together in the greatest exemplification of just team spirit, collaboration, support amongst each other, and uh, supporting their colleagues. We see them out on the units, in conference rooms, uh, on, uh, on, in collaboratives, learning from uh, colleagues at other hospitals. We benchmark ourselves, and the Benioff Children's Hospital in San Francisco wasn't necessarily in the greatest place a couple of years ago. But with incredible teamwork, in just one, the past one year, this team has reduced the CLABSI rate by 25%, a remarkably difficult thing to achieve. And they've done this, as I said before, by supporting each of their colleagues out on the units through education, uh, support, reminders, just-in-time coaching. They've done so by developing an amazingly rigorous framework for collecting data, identifying things that are best practices and evidence-based out in the community for uh, little things, little changes in practice, bundle compliance, and some innovations, um, and just week after week, month after month, working to improve just one more thing, one more notch, one more unit, one more uh, learning from a patient who um, has been unfortunate enough to have an infection of what can we learn to prevent the next one. And percentages are one way to look at it, but I just want to say that um, from the prior year to the current year just finished, there were 17 fewer infections, this means that 17 fewer newborns or children uh, that didn't have to suffer from near sepsis or sepsis didn't need to be transferred to the intensive care unit, didn't need their hospital stay extended uh, for weeks for IV antibiotics, didn't need to have a life-threatening infection um, that may have compromised uh, their bone marrow transplant or uh, cancer treatment. So I really, it's really important to put this in human terms, and uh, the work that you all do is remarkable. Um, I, if I thanked everyone by name, I think I'd slow us down. So I'm going to let Lisa. Uh, Sang and Deb Franz and come up and present and thank the rest of their colleagues on the team. Thank you. Um, thank you for this award. We're really honored and humbled to be here to represent really all of um, UCSF San Francisco in this tremendous effort. Um, not to be a stats person, but to correct the numbers a little bit. We actually <laughs> made a goal of a 25% reduction, and we far exceeded it, and it was a 36% reduction. Um, so <laughs> just wanted to make sure <laughs> everybody knew that. Um, but I do, <laughs> we have many people to thank, and they're um, standing behind us in addition to really all the frontline staff um, and the nursing leaders for all of the units. And I really particularly want to thank the um, the executive leadership at the Children's Hospital for really standing behind um, Lisa and I um, and Lynn Ramirez, our director of um, infection prevention, when we came up with some um, sort of crazy ideas and um, you know biweekly huddles and things that we really wanted to do, and they really gave us um, that leeway. And I think I heard opportunity earlier tonight from another awardee, and I, I really appreciate that about UCSF and the leadership here. And we took it and ran with it, and they've been very supportive really every step of the way. Um, we're still working on the raffle of a car um, for <laughs> um, you know for the greatest uh, Clapsy Prevention Champion, but we're really um, honored by this. Lisa has a few other thank yous mm -hmm. to recognize. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Steve. Um, I want to just um, call it some of the individuals on the stage. There are a number of them that work in the background, um, uh, aren't seen as much in, in our work with collapse prevention. Um, Ed Koo is here from Nursing PI. Um, uh, he's essential for producing the data and making it usable, and he gets a lot of requests, um, especially from me, many times a day, and he, he always comes through. Um, Kim Stanley from our Hospital of Epidemiology and Infection Control Department, who also is in the back, is sort of in the background producing data and making it visible and usable to the front line. Um, Connie is a relatively new member of our team. She's our administrative um, assistant who helps with our collapse prevention committee and um, 
keeps us in line, keeps us moving forward. She's been such a great addition. Um, I want to thank um, Deb and Lynn for being fantastic uh, physician partners. They, um, I've been doing this work actually for quite some time, collapse prevention work, and they've made it um, not easy, but easier and um, so rewarding and actually fun in a, in a new way. Um, they, they're wonderful partners, and they're just, I think they're just helping us to get to the next, the next phase. Thank you, Denart, for the nomination, for supporting us from, from the executive office. Um, always, always supportive and, um, of every idea that we have. Um, I very much want to, want to thank, most, most importantly, our, our end champions, who are our unit-based resources. Um, we have Lana and Jeanette here as our CBC resource nurses. Um, they, they lead the way. Um, they lead a big group, though, of unit-based um, physicians, sorry, not physicians, nurses who are um, at the bedside supporting our, our frontline staff, one nurse at a time, a lot of times, um, in practicing, uh, pract uh, correcting their practice, um, troubleshooting difficult dressing changes, and um, just boosting up our compliance with central line care. And that is where I think we've seen the most, um, the most advanced advances in our in our in our work and so we'll keep on supporting that group um, we have a lot of work to do still and we will keep doing it thank you very much Well, congratulations to our patient safety winners. I would now like to invite Kim Skurr, Dr. Susan Smith, Laurel Bray Hannon, and Shelby DeCosta to join me on stage to present the Voice of the Patient Awards. Good evening. My name, I think it's still evening. Maybe, maybe it's good night now. Um, uh, I'm here to announce the Voice of the Patient Awards. I, I first want to thank um, everyone who has served us this really beautiful meal and um, for over-serving Cliff on the wine. So <laughs> maybe we could cut that, maybe we could cut that off now. Uh, the Voice of the Patient Awards honor those departments and teams who have achieved excellence in developing a patient-centered culture. We have two types of award, the Rising Star Award and the Pinnacle Award. We give each of these awards in both the inpatient and outpatient settings. The Rising Star Award is presented annually to the departments achieving the greatest improvement in patient experience ratings over two years. Okay, I had to put something on my phone. I am deeply proud to invite C5 Med Surge to the stage. Come on. This team has worked so hard over the last couple of years to enhance the patient experience. Their annual mean score went from the 63rd percentile to the 80th percentile. C5 Med Surge is literally the hub of the Benioff Children's Hospital San Francisco. They support over 50 subspecialty services with each bringing uniquely challenging patients to the Benioff Children's Hospital and subsequently to C5. The nurses are dedicated to and provide clinical excellence to their young patient and compassion to their families, all of whom are very, very stressed. I would like to personally thank the leadership team who is relatively new. So to Meg and Denise and Barbette and Darren, their medical director. Honestly, the last few years uh, for me personally as a leader have been uh, I've just been filled with such pride for the way they have come together. Today we sat at their True North board, and this is just one of the pillars that they have really, really excelled at. And to all the nurses here, 
uh, representing C5, I just want to give my very heartfelt congratulations. And also just to acknowledge Denart Viveros, the acute care director, because I think his humble support uh, has really been helpful to this leadership team. So thank you. <laughs> you can't come up because of the whole Raptor situation. Come on. Thank you, Kim, for the kind words. Um, this is an amazing award to receive on behalf of all of our staff on C5. Um, this goes to, honestly, all the nurses, the doctors, the patient care assistants, the unit coordinators, the safety attendants. This um, is the work that we do every single day, shift, shift after shift. Um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> So um, my name is Dr. Susan Smith, and I am a family medicine physician here and chief faculty practice officer, so help run the ambulatory uh, practices. Um, <laughs> uh, so I have the great pleasure of uh, announcing the Outpatient Rising Star Award, and for that, please welcome the UCSF Balance and Falls Center. So um, the Balance and Falls Center at UCSF evaluates and recommends treatment for various causes of vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. Uh, this group has worked really hard uh, to work on their patient satisfaction uh, uh, and experience over the last uh, year or so. Uh, we round on these departments on a regular basis. Uh, somebody is in their department uh, every month or so, and that's in all of the departments, and we know just how hard it is to move these scores. Most of our teams struggle to get a one point or one-tenth of a point improvement over the course of a year. And these scores are important. They're important, of course, primarily for our patients. Are they having a good experience uh, with UCSF? They're also important for our staff and our physicians because if we're having a good experience and the staff is having a good experience, everybody's day is going a little bit better. And lastly, they're really important because when everybody's having a better experience, the patients actually have better outcomes. So this team worked incredibly hard this year, and they went from the 18th percentile to the 92nd percentile. <laughs> Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Pai Lanand. I'm an audiologist here, and I'm the director of audiology in, um, and Balance and Falls. Balance and Falls group that you see here is a small subset of our audiology division, which is also a very sub small and young group here at UCSF. And I would say this award is just a direct reflection of the hard work of all my colleagues and team members that are here today. Um, <clears throat> this, this award means a lot for patients to give us high marks on the patient satisfaction score for what we do to them in clinic when they come in for a balance appointment. It's huge. Uh, not only do we make the dizzy patients more dizzy, uh, but we refrain them from having coffee, no caffeine, when they come into these visits. So they're, they're, they're very anxious, and uh, it's really kudos to my very caring and empathetic colleagues, providers. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to our new patient scheduler, Vicki Caleb, who is the most kind uh, person on the phone, um, and Lauren Pasquesi, who is my lead audiologist for Balance and Pauls, has really taken um, this, uh, I'm sure, will take the center to even greater heights. So, um, Thank you, UCSF, for this opportunity. Thank you to the leadership and believing with us. 
and I'm confident this, this award is just going to strengthen our self-belief. We're a small, as I said, small, young, but mighty group. And uh, we are just, um, you know, confident that we're going to continue to do what we do better each and every day. So thank you. Good evening. I'm uh, Laurel Brahannon. I'm the Vice President, Chief Operating Officer for Adult Cancer Services at UCSF. And I'm full of pride. This is like an amazing evening. I just want to say that. It's so great. Um, I have the pleasure of awarding the um, Pinnacle Award for inpatient. So can I have the Adult Acute Care uh, Mission Bay group come join me on stage, please? <clears throat> The Pinnacle Award is presented annually to the department achieving the highest patient experience ratings over a three-year period. For the fourth straight year, the fourth straight year, I'd like to present the Inpatient Pinnacle Award to the team from Adult Acute Care at Mission Bay. Adult acute care is part of the inpatient adult cancer and women's health hospital at Mission Bay. Based on patient survey scores, the team has achieved an exceptionally high recommendation score, putting them at the 98th percentile. Congratulations. And just a comment. You know, cancer patients don't, they don't elect to want to have surgery. So the fact that these patients who are going through something that is really, really hard for you to reach the 90th percentile is incredible. So thank you. Hi, I want to thank everyone on behalf of the staff who are represented here on stage. And I also wanted to thank Mendy Eckhouse, our patient care director, for being here and supporting us tonight. Every day, our unit strives to provide excellent patient care from the moment that the patient arrives to the time of discharge. Together, we work to create a healing environment that in turn creates a positive patient care experience. This award is a reflection of how hard our staff work to achieve this. This is the fourth consecutive year that our unit has received this award, and I am truly proud to be a part of this unit and to work with this amazing group of people who work hard every day to provide exceptional patient care. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Shelby DaCosta and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for UCSF Health. One of our most important strategies is to recruit and retain the best people and it's clear tonight from the people in this room that we're doing just that. There might be one exception, but we really value Cliff Skinner as well. For the Outpatient Pinnacle Award, please join me in welcoming the post-lung transplant team to the stage for the second year in a row. The UCSF Lung Transplant Program provides comprehensive care to patients with advanced lung disease before and after lung transplantation. Since the inception of the program, we have given more than 700 patients a better chance at a longer, more active life. When patients were asked if they would recommend the program, nearly everyone said yes. This team scored in the 99th percentile. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. 
thank you. My name is Steve Hayes, and I, um, I directed this group along with Jeslyn Kukrasia, and I cannot tell you what a privilege and honor it is to, to, to um, be part of this amazing team. First of all, um, we are humbled. We're also really excited. We're humbled because this award really represents what we feel almost most strongly about, which is really building a relationship with patients. And we're excited because um, we've got bragging rights over Heart Transplant, who won this uh, award two years ago. So we're going to keep that going. But I did want to speak just briefly about the relationship piece. I think it's something that really is pervasive uh, amongst our, uh, along our service from the time the patients come into our service as referrals through the hospitalization and afterwards. And I think we all have that same um, passion for building the relationships, and we believe that that really makes for better outcomes, but it also makes for better job satisfaction for us. Um, we love what we do. And um, we couldn't have those relationships without such an incredible team. And I did want to take this opportunity to point out a few people. I'm going to bank that there's not people who aren't on the stage live streaming this, so I'll, I'll take the risk and, and call out individuals who are here. Um, oftentimes in these programs, the physicians and people who are kind of maybe out front uh, get recognition, but the physicians understand it's actually the people who are really on the front lines are the nurse coordinators, the social workers, the pharmacists, and I want to call out the, the, uh, some people on this stage tonight who really have made a huge difference in our program, and those are our nurse coordinators, Millie Camba, Millie. Rochelle Gali, and Danny Draper. And I would also uh, like to highlight Mary Yang, who is one of our social workers. And we also have a really a great relationship with the Heart and Vascular Center. We have some representatives from that service here as well. And finally, I would be remiss if I didn't thank the patients who really, I think, make this award possible, and they make our existence possible. Um, these patients that we work with endure, um, endure more than we can probably imagine at times, and they display such incredible heroism. It really inspires us to do what we do every day. Um, so again, like we, we wouldn't have this job without them, and I think in, in part, this award is for them as well. Uh, again, I want to thank UCSF Health and the Med Center for acknowledging this. This is really meaningful for us. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Clifton Eubank, Dr. Jade Hiramoto, and Faye Mickey Damian to present the final Exception Physician Awards. Good evening, my name is Cliff Eubank. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in uh, research in pediatric surgery and trauma at Benioff Children's Hospital in Oakland. Um, and it's my very great pleasure to uh, present the next award winner, who is Dr. Christopher Newton, a pediatric surgeon, uh, up for the second time on the stage. So we heard a really beautiful testimony from one of Dr. Newton's patients a little bit earlier, along with the rest of the team uh, over in Oakland. I've had the pleasure of working with Dr. Newton now for four years as an intern, as a resident, now as a research fellow um, doing trauma research um, over in Oakland. Um, and it's been a very moving experience for me, and I've uh, never wavered in seeing how he treats colleagues and uh, resident students and patients as partners uh, in whatever process we're approaching together. 
Um, throughout his extensive career as a colonel in the U.S. Army, uh, doing surgery in the front lines, um, as a teacher, uh, teaching uh, unknowing residents and fellows like myself, things like the meaning of life, which of course is delivery of oxygenated blood to the tissues, um, <laughs> and as a counselor with patients um, in Oakland who continue to come to our uh, emergency room every week uh, with gunshot wounds and having to explain to the parents why there's violence on the streets and why things continue to be the way that they are. Um, Dr. Newton has been involved in all of these things for many, many years, and it's been my very great pleasure uh, to serve alongside him. Um, I'd like to thank the other members of the Trauma Services Department, uh, uh, Jackie and Debbie Crane, um, who were also involved in this nomination. Um, and again, for the second time this evening, an extraordinary individual, physician, and mentor, uh, Dr. Christopher Newton. Well, um, wow! I, I, um, I, I, I got to say, I'm I'm so moved, and um, uh, and it's amazing to get this. And I, I just found out who sent in that nomination. I had no idea till just now. Um, uh, you know, I, I I would like to clarify. You know, one thing from from my standpoint, the the real privilege of my life of what I'm lucky to do is to serve those kids that I serve over in, you know, over in that hospital and, um, uh, and to uh, on any level be recognized for doing what you love, uh, you know, well is a, a really surreal, special moment and, um, and thank you. Um, I'll be brief. I know it's getting to be a long night. I, you know, I will uh, say thank you to my wife and my daughter for um, uh, putting up with me being home late and missing dinners and going back into the hospital in the middle of the night and, uh, uh, and doing that for years. And, and to my residents who apparently can still you know, send in a nomination for me even after putting up with me preaching and ranting about humanity instead of equations and, and techniques. And, um, and thanks for listening to me. <laughs> All right. Hi, good evening. My name is Jade Hiramoto. I'm one of the vascular surgeons here, and I'd like to invite Dr. Linda Riley up to the stage. Give a good shout out to Linda Riley. So it's really impossible for me to uh, describe Dr. Riley's exceptional characteristics in under two minutes, but I'm going to stick to the time limit, and I'm just going to hit the high points. So simply put, Dr. Riley is an amazing teacher, physician, and surgeon. I know many of you in the room know her and appreciate that. Throughout every step of her career, she has really gone above and beyond all expectations. She was the first woman to complete the general surgery training program at Johns Hopkins University, and the first woman to complete the vascular surgery fellowship at UCSF. And I can tell you, <laughs> that is no easy task. So I've known and worked with Dr. Riley for over 20 years, and I was just doing the math between, you know, she and I together have 61 years here at UCSF. But anyways, I can say that she is a person of utmost integrity. Um, she'll always do the right thing, no matter how challenging or maybe even annoying it may be. Uh, she'll never compromise her values or take the easy way out. And I think this character trait has really influenced everyone around her, and especially the students, the residents, and the fellows who've had the pleasure uh, of working with her. She's been an educational leader at the national level. Uh, she's been the UCSF General Surgery Program Director, and in that role, she's played a tremendous uh, role in increasing the diversity amongst the general surgery trainees. Um, you know, Linda's funny. She, already, she has this amazing encyclopedic knowledge of all things vascular surgery, but she's always interested in, like, learning new things and exploring new techniques. You know, oftentimes you'll be, you know, in the middle of the night doing some tricky endovascular case, and then you'll, you'll just hear this voice in the back saying, oh, maybe you should try that. And you're like, yeah, maybe I should. And it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and what are you doing here? But thank you for coming and, and helping out. So it's been great. It's, I've been so lucky. Uh, I've had this excellent fortune of being trained by Dr. Riley. She's really 
immensely influence how I approach surgical problems and take care of patients. I'm really proud to call her a friend and a colleague. I really can't think of anyone more deserving of this award. It's long overdue. Um, I guess I should begin uh, and be brief uh, by saying that when Dr. Adler called me about this award, he said, I have some good news. And I immediately said, you're giving me more money for resident positions. <laughs> he, of course, said no. And I kind of lost interest, I must admit, in the rest of his conversation. <clears throat> but in fact, and I, I can't resist saying, I, I sort of noticed that everybody else who's gotten an award tonight got it like 30 years faster than me, so I, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that says. I'm slow, but I got here anyway. Um, but it is, to me, astonishing to get an award for doing your job and for doing what you love. And in that regard, everybody at UCSF should get this award. You probably think by now at the end of the night that everybody at UCSF has gotten this award. <laughs> but, but, I, but I mean that. I don't really feel that anything that I did was different than anyone else who comes to work every day at UCSF and does their job. So thank you very much for this award. It's a great honor. But James Benon, Sheila Antrim, Mark Larratt, this will not stop me from nagging you about the elevators, <laughs> the parking lot, and any other areas that I think we could be better at and create even more pride in UCSF. Congratulations again, Dr. Riley. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Faye Mikey Damien. I'm the practice manager for Mount Zion Pediatrics. Adolescent Medicine and Acute Care in Pediatrics at Mount Zion. I am so honored that I'm giving the last physician award. <laughs> it's overdue. I'd like to call Dr. Alan Uba on the stage, please. When you talk about pride, Dr. Uba is a trait, has a trait that Dr. Uba has shown over and over again. His professionalism shows through his positive attitude towards staff, colleagues, patients, and parents. You'll hear residents and others comment about him, that he's very supportive, monitoring style, and his knowledge is beyond reproach. Dr. Uba is well respected because he treats everyone with respect showing the same towards younger colleagues, the students, as well as those above him. And he's very sensitive to everyone's needs across the diverse population of residents and medical students. He responds to patients and parental concerns in a calm and caring manner. His integrity shows as he listens, acknowledge, asks questions, and then he offers his assistance. Parents do not have to worry as they know their concerns will be taken care of by Dr. Uba because he takes everything seriously and promptly. He works morning and night. <laughs> you'll see him there in the at work at 7 o'clock in the morning and you'll, you'll see them here, there again at 7 o'clock at night. He's still working. The dedication and care given to his profession and his responsibility sum up to his excellence, not only as a pediatrician and a healthcare provider, but also as a member of pediatric team as a whole. When you say extra mile, Dr. Uber can exceed that mile and will still continue to go far beyond. You can ask his panel of patients, only those that could speak though, but also their parents. No no other words 
can leave the care. No one wants to leave the care of Dr. Uba. They want to stay there, even if they're older. Because they know they're going to be taken care of. It's my honor to present this award to Dr. Uba. That's a question. This must be alphabetical order, I think. Um, I, I want uh, Cliff Skinner to know that my, uh, my, uh, my number is uh, 454350, <laughs> and I'd like the bobblehead of a Seth Curry if there's still one left. Uh, my, my carbon footprint is at an eight and a half, and my pants came in a plastic bag. Uh, I, I have to thank you know, the patients and families you know, who we have the privilege and honor of taking care of, and, and that really is what brings us to work every day. Uh, I want to thank my wife, Nora, and my daughters, Noel and Allison. Uh, I want to thank the uh, entire staff of the Pediatric Primary Care Clinic. I want to thank our uh, students and residents for showing us that the future of medicine is bright. And I want to thank all the members of the UCSF community for bringing their best work uh, every day. Uh, we are UCSF. And uh, if they get that CLAPC uh, Prevention Center raffle, my raffle number again is 454-350. Thank you very much. So uh, we, are, we are very honored to uh, invite to the stage uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Cliff Skinner, everybody. Mr. Cliff Skinner. Cliff what? Cliff Sma Skinner? Yeah, I tell ya. you. People don't use the word honor and Cliff Skinner in the same yeah. sentence, Tom Lynch, but yeah. thank you for having me. Uh, Dr. Riley, where are you sitting, ma'am? Wow. Was she not interesting and funny? And I love what you said. Getting an award for doing your job. I thought that's very, very touching. I, that's, I think we could all take, learn a lot from that. It's quite an honor. All right, so this is the last time you get to see me tonight. Aren't you lucky? And I think Dr. Uba is going to get my job next year for the Raffle Meister. Right? This is highly coveted. All right, so I think we're going to do the uh, wine first, right? So, okay, Dr. King? What was it? Well, well anyway, oh, is this, I'll, is I'll this? give his number, but... This sounds like... He never texts. This sounds like collusion to me, folks. <laughs> collusion. Remind you of somebody? All right, we're gonna uh, give, a, uh, my friend Jeff Chu had a hint for me. Uh, this is a bottle of wine we know from our colleague down here that it costs $42, right? So uh, while we're talking about your gift, the per whoever has ticket 454-312, come on up. You got, you got some wine. 454-312. Hey, it's Ricky from Radiology. R Ricky, right? Yeah, yeah, Ricky, have you had wine before? I have a little bit tonight. So. Have you had cheap wine before? <laughs> is this from Trader Joe's? Or? Well, this, this is where I'm going. This is Jeff Chu's idea. You can take this $42 bottle, take it home, stick in a $5 bottle from Trader Joe's, and put it in and re gift it. You see, it's a win win. You get expensive wine, and you get over on somebody that's got cheap wine, but in the beautiful, elegant box, right? Ricky, I'm here to help. All right, thank you. I'm here. I'm here for you. All right? Thank you. All right. We, I think we have a, another Amazon gift certificate coming up. You know, the bobbleheads, the bobbleheads were very popular, weren't they? Except for the guy who was the Raptors fan. That kind of was a drag in the whole evening. But... Um, <laughs> But the, uh, I thought the, I had a number of people ask me about the bobbleheads, and you can go to bobbleheads.com backslash UCSF leaders. And the, the Shelby DaCosta, Kim Skur, and James Banan are like priceless. <laughs> but if you click on the Cliff Skinner, it immediately takes you to overstock.com, ten, 10 for a buck, free shipping. All right, so if you want to have a bobblehead, I could, you could load up. All right, so the winner of the gift certificate is 454247. Four five four two four seven. 
is that wishful thinking <laughs> that they went home? Yeah, do, do we have a two, four, five, four, two, four, seven? All right, I think I don't. No, it's not just what you ask for. It has to be on the ticket. I, I guess somebody calling out a number. Thank you, sir. Uh, four, five, four, three, three, seven. Is it four, four, five, four, three, three, seven? Good. Hey. Yeah. Oh, you're you're the forty year old. You know what? Nobody believes you. You've been here forty years. Turn around. Look at the look at the audience. Right. It's forty years of service, not forty years old. Did you see that? Did you understand that? I wish I was forty years old. Got it. Great. Well, congratulations. You don't have to give me that. Congratulations on you won. One fair and square. Seventy-five dollars. Right. So this is kind of our grand prize, folks. Uh, it is a, a gift certificate to the original Joe's restaurant. And I have some things to tell you about that. Dr. King, did you want this, sir? I mean, yeah, I, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, you're holding the ticket awfully yes, tightly. Well, yeah, I, I was just checking the number. Yeah. <laughs> this gentleman outranks me hugely. If I, could, do you mind if I just give it to him? <laughs> All right. we, we'll go together. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right, so Original Joe's gift certificate. This is good for the Original Joe's in San Francisco or in Westlake Village in Daly City. Uh, 454348. You're too young to go to Joe's. Okay. All right, 454348. Do we have a winner? Congratulations. And w sir, what is your name? Dustin. Dustin, what, what team are you with? With C5 MSP. You guys were, oh, look at that pride. You guys were just recognized. So I think you should enjoy, take, take somebody, special somebody with you and enjoy your dinner out. Welcome, Justin. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. So thank you again, Cliff. Cliff and I go back a long, long way, and uh, when we were working together, I, I never knew you had this skill in you, but uh, thank you for, for doing this year after year. Um, let me congratulate uh, both our lucky raffle winners this evening, but really all of our award winners throughout the evening. Let's give everyone a, a, a final round of applause. And now it's my, my honor to present the final award of the evening. It's called the UCSF Health Leadership Award, and it's presented in recognition of exceptional vision as a leader, a commitment to patience, compassion as a human being, and a, dedicated, and a dedication to UCSF Health. It's now my great honor to present this award tonight to Dr. John Stobo, Executive Vice President of the University of California Health System. Thought leader, visionary, advocate. These are just a few words that describe Dr. John Stobo. Jack is a thought leader for sure. Over the last 45 years, he has held leadership roles at institutions such as UCSF, Johns Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, and the University of Texas Medical Branch. He's also had leadership positions in numerous national organizations. But Jack has done more than just lead. He created evolutionary advancements in the clinical and academic health science fields, both in basic science, but also by urging others to be open to new ways of thinking, by creating best practices that they can then follow. For example, in the early 1990s, he chaired the American Board of Internal Medicine's project Professionalism. At that time, a forward-looking thinking group that developed principles dedicated to instilling the concepts that we know so well today of professionalism in internal medicine. He particularly stressed the need for the teaching of professionalism to our students and the next generation. Jack is a visionary. He foresaw the sweeping changes that have disrupted healthcare and he positioned UC Health and UCSF Health for success. He has worked tirelessly to educate everyone across the UC system about the need for immediate action, 
and providing our medical centers with greater agility in order to navigate the rapid changes in the industry. Just one example, I was in the room when Jack presenting to the regions said, and I quote, standing still doing nothing is an existential threat to UC Health and its components. You don't normally make such statements uh, to the UC regions. He also recognized the strength in our individual medical centers becoming a system. In fact, we have invented a word that is the Stobo word in the dictionary called systemness. He pushed uh, for less than popular concepts at the beginning, such as levering scale for value, which finds efficiencies across the system and has produced cumulative savings of more than $700 million since the program started. Jack has been an advocate for patients throughout his career. Last year, UC Health, under his direction, had more than 4,700,000 outpatient visits and 174,000 admissions. In fact, UC Health is the third largest provider of inpatient care for Medi-Cal enrollees in the state of California, despite constituting less than 6% of the acute care beds in the state. Jack's passion to improve the quality, safety, and affordability of care for all, especially the most vulnerable patients that we serve, has been a consistent theme throughout his life. Woven throughout these accomplishments is Jack's greatest virtue, his values. He is a man of principles who lives the professionalism he helped define. Despite tackling challenging issues while overseeing 17 health professional schools, 10 hospitals, and UC self-funded health plans, Jack has led with thoughtfulness, grace, and humor. He is deeply respected from the regents on down, to the CEOs of the hospitals, to the deans of the health professional schools, and all he has touched. We are truly fortunate that someone of Jack's caliber and authenticity has been at the helm of UCSF Health for over the last decade. Now, Jack announced his retirement this year, and we will certainly miss him. But I suspect he will, have, he will enjoy having more time to live out one more and very important word, that is, a fisherman. We wish Jack, his wife Mary Ann, and his family great health, exciting travel, and a freezer stocked with salmon and trout. So please join me in, in congratulating Jack on his lifelong career. Well, th <clears throat> thank you very much, Sam, and uh, th thanks to all of you. Uh, and just listening to this tonight, it reminds me uh, of a book written by an author, uh, Stephen Farber, uh, called The Radical Leap. And it's a book about uh, what makes leaders and managers successful. And in the book, he gives some advice. It says, do what you love in the service of those who love what you do. And how much have we heard that tonight? You all love what you do. You do it in the service of those you serve, the people of California and beyond. And I just want to tell you that we at UC Health, in the Office of the President, and I think I speak for the leadership of UCSF, love and your patients, love what you do. So thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. It's a great evening. Thanks to each of you for sharing it with us. Special thanks to all of the award winners tonight. But how about saving one more round of applause for our health experience and special events team, uh, Kim Murphy and team, a spectacular event. So thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. and. For one final time, let's welcome Vocal Rush back to the stage. Good night, everybody.
was born this way, hey, I was born this way, hey, I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way, hey. <laughs> My mama told me when I was young She said we were all one superstars Mama done told me She put my hair and put my lipstick on In a glass of her but There's nothing wrong with loving who you are She said, cause you made your perfect babe So hold your head up, girl, and you'll go far Listen to me when I say I'm beautiful in my way, cause God makes no mistakes I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way Don't I just suffer regret, just love yourself and you said I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way There ain't no other way, no, there ain't no other way Baby, I was born this way There ain't no other way, no, there ain't no other way Right track, baby, I was born this way Give yourself prudence and love your friends So a kid rejoice your truth And though religion of the insecure I must be myself, respect my youth A different lover is not a sin Believe capital H I am I love my love, I love this red curtain Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for...